John. I don't know. You've been sleeping rough for a long know. time. On and off, yep, yeah, about 30 years. But right now, you're in the hospital. Yep, yeah, I'm in the hospital. i got um, uh, health problems at the moment, and uh, you could say the streets caught me up eventually. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And, and um, so tell me about sleeping rough in the UK. Uh, it's not easy. Um, nobody would say it's so easy. It's, um, best way of putting it. Um, it is what it is. It's sleeping on the street. Um, there's different ways of doing it. Uh, you sleep in a bus, you sleep in a shop doorway. Um, you sleep in a car park. Somebody's shop doorway, you know, it's, it, but it's all the same. It's, uh, you're sleeping rough, it is what it is. Um, especially the rain. If it rains, you get wet. It's two o'clock in the morning, you sleep bloody wet. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Now, um, when you're sleeping rough, you're sleeping rough for 30 years. On and off, not all the time, not not cons not collectively all the time, 30 years, on and off. Yeah. Because I've been sofa surfing, been in hostels, been in night shelters, been in cold weather shelters, um, bed and breakfast. Only at once it was in private accommodation that didn't last long because it was um, what they call tired accommodation and the accommodation went with the job, lose the job, you lose the accommodation. That was another way I've, I've, I've done it. I've been in lots of different housing arenas and situations, but all linked to homelessness, you could say. It's temporary housing, lots of different forms. Yeah. And now, now, you're in, you, now you're in the... Um Sleeping here in the hospital. Yep. You won't mention what hospital. No, you got brought in. You have serious health problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't be on the streets. Well, I've got um, health problems. I've got what they call COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. That's serious health problems. Breathing problems. Uh, I think partly due from sleeping on the streets. Um, I've got uh, problems with my legs. I've got big ulcers on my legs. And I've got... Um, Problems with needle bits as well, kidneys. It's not helping as well. So yeah, it's a combination thing I've got on the go. Yeah. And um, yeah. Um, but you shouldn't be. You're not healthy. You should be inside. Yeah, yeah. Um, call me an old fool if you like, but um, I don't know. I, homelessness, the whole thing just kind of got ingrained upon me. I've got. It's just become natural to me to be, to be sleeping rough, I suppose. Yeah, but nobody should. I know. Get used to sleeping rough. But you do. It's it's the unfortunate thing about it. Um, you do get used to it, and eventually, it's, it's it is it is um. It's a funny thing to say, but you do get used to it. I don't know why, but you bloody do. Yeah. Well, and what, humans are and, the word, and then the, the word comes is, and there's a word used within the homeless sector. You become entrenched. Uh, you get stuck in it, and it's true. You do become entrenched. So, you do get stuck in it. Yeah. And it's very difficult to get out of. Well, the homeless sector needs to unstuck it. Unstuck people. Yeah, um, they do. They're pretty good. you got to admit it. They're not bad, the homeless sector. We're all said and done it. How a fair few people. Some people I never thought would get off the streets. Yeah. Or off the streets. No, you got some great services here. No, working yeah. Hard. Yeah, there are some good services. So, uh, you use social media. Yeah, I do all the time. We uh, have tweet back and forth, tried to meet like four years ago, didn't We've happen. Tried to but do that, yeah. This week we met, you were yeah. actually out on the streets homeless. Yeah, I was. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you tweet me, you're in the hospital. Yeah, so I come just, visit yeah, you. I went to. Um, I see, um, because of my legs and my ulcers, I see people who change the dressings quite regular. The doctor took a look at me and said, Oh my God, you're breathing so bad. There's only one place for you, that's yeah. hospital. Well, so you're using social media. Yeah. And you got to be famous, infamous with all the comms departments. I'm going to clear about that. Because you're always, you know, responding to their social media. Um, all of them. Well, I mean, it, you go through your tree. You, you don't discriminate. You tell <laughs> them like it is. Well, it's an open platform, so why not? Yeah. It's called democracy. Right. Simple as straightforward as that. And if you can't, we've got to expect everybody, we've got to respect everybody's opinions. 
there's lots of different opinions, lots of different aspects to everything, and it's like, it's about um, democratic values, this is the way I look at it. Yeah. Well, you're an expert. I mean, people are on the streets are experts, much more than a chief exec or a research scientist or whatever. So one of the things, as you know, I do a lot of social media with mm. people sleeping rough, rough yeah, sleepers, yeah. and I base my work really off of seeing the interactions of people like you with, uh, you know, uh, chief executives here in the UK tweeting back and forth. And it's just, to me, it's brilliant. Yeah, I think it's a good thing because um, through social media, you're given the opportunity to talk to people in the normal circumstances. There are so many artificial layers and barriers for you to, to meet, actually meeting these people. It's a known possibility. Yeah. And then they're busy people as well, so... Yeah, but they should be listening. I mean, it's great well, hopefully. empowering. I mean, if they're out there sharing about hopefully homeless they services, uh, they should be listening to the homeless they people that are... They need to yeah. listen to the people actually using the services. Yeah. And that's the crux of the thing. It's like, um, how shall I say, uh, do you buy a car without protesting it? It's as simple as that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what now? I mean, when I came and visited you the other day, you really didn't know, but it looks like now they're going to put you in respite care. Yeah, yeah. The, um, I, from what I've been told so far, um, a care package has been put together for me. And when I leave the confines of a the hospital, there's going to be another setup for me because my health conditions yeah. uh, won't allow me to go straight back to the yeah. streets. I've got other things to deal with. Um, quite serious issues with my health and yeah. it's going to be a prolonged issue so well, they, they don't want me back on the street so, <laughs> uh, and I applaud them. I never wanted you back on when I first met you you were in housing and, and I, then you were back on the street. I applaud the people supporting you at the moment it's yeah. as simple as that so yeah, yeah fair play. Well, Can't when, argue with that about when it. you tweet me and DM me a photo of being in the hospital I was um, very concerned, but then I was very hopeful that it would be a path for you to get out of the streets. Yeah, well, yeah, that's unfortunate set of circumstances how it came about, but um, hopefully there's, uh, as I say, light at the end of the tunnel now, and um, the, the, the hen lays the egg. That's as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, what would you tell homeless service people, homeless service workers, what would you say to them? If you had one thing to say, what would you say? Never give up. Never give up on people? Don't give up on people. Even on the right. ones like you? Well, no, no there, are some, <laughs> there are some people that have got immense lot of problems and hidden problems that don't come to the surface on initial talking to people, yeah. work with people. Try to understand people, understand their issues and from which direction they're coming from and allow people to have their choice. Don't make the choice for them. Mm, and there is ask, asking the first question, what would you like? Yeah. Not would, what we've got for you. Right. Right, very much so. And it and, would help. And I should clarify why you're ornery. I mean, before I hit record, you're putting that mask on the side of your face and doing all kinds of funny stuff, making it difficult for me. What do you mean, like this? No, not like that. You're doing it on... You're, yeah, yeah, you're being nice in the camera roll. You give me a hard time. So if you had three wishes, John, what would they be? I repeat the same wishes that I said earlier in the week. First one and biggest one would be peace on the earth. Second thing would be equality for everybody. And third thing would be another wish. Yeah. And I don't know what that wish would be. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. No problem, mate. Thank you. Thank you for visiting me in hospital. I appreciate that very much. Um, and thank you for the things that you do. Thank you.